CMD, do I need to go radial or do I need to go femoral? In my practice, um, I haven't altered my axis. I, um, I tend to use radial. If I'm doing a sole um, study for CMD, measuring CFR and IMR, uh, I will just go in with radial. Uh, and then I will skip my cocktail. I'll give the same heparin. Um, and I will continue. Many of other institutions do actually prefer femoral, um, especially if they are trying to do acetylcholine challenge. The reason for that is because they don't, they don't want to have spasm, increase in um, catecholamine and um, um, anxiety or nervousness for the patients going through the radial. They go femoral, it's easier, it's quick access, and uh, they do their acetylcholine. In my practice, even when I'm doing acetylcholine, again, I go radial, I skip the cocktail. Uh, there are many trials or uh, recent studies talking about the benefit of um, spasmolytic agents, the cocktail, whether it's calcium chain blocker or nitroglycerin, uh, that doesn't have that much of, um, of um, um, benefit or, or effect on um, uh, making the uh, procedure easier. So I gain access six French uh, or five French, and I will go radial, um, but you can go up either way. This, the messaging is, do not alter your practice. Six French is suitable. If you need to downgrade, you can definitely use five French. You just need to tweak some of your techniques. As I said, hold the wire, forceful injections, make sure that your wire doesn't migrate distally to the coronary vessel. Um, another question we get asked all the time, can I use side holds? Basics of physiology recommends that you do not use uh, side holds. Do I hold medications before doing my procedure? A question that your physicians will ask you, do you want me to do anything for the patient regimen before coming to the lab? We have to understand the background of microvascular dysfunction. Some of my practice are patients referred for the sole indication to get an answer for an unexplained chest pain for many years. This cohort of patients, that group of patients who are been somewhere, they've been, um, uh, they have been into many physicians, many cardiologists, many emergency rooms, and now they are coming to my institution looking for an answer. For those patients, if I am doing acetylcholine challenge, I will stop calcium channel blockers at least 48 hours before I do my assessment. Um, if I'm doing an ad hoc using pressure wire X in a case of my NOCA, for example, a patient comes to the emergency room with, uh, with elevated biomarkers, something we call the, an NSTEMI, and now they're on the table, and I go in and I find no obstructive coronary artery disease, and I want to make sure they have, they have or they don't have microvascular disease. Obviously, those patients, I have no control over stopping their, their medications because they came into the emergency room, and I'm, I'm doing an ad hoc. For that reason, I don't stop it. I take that as a, a step further. If I'm just doing microvascular testing, you don't need to hold anything. You might need to hold some of your um, um, caffeine intake. There are some literature talking about caffeine interacting with adenosine, but again, all my patients, I would just say don't drink coffee the morning off. Just, you know, had the uh, coffee the, the, the day before, you're fine. But the morning off, just stay fasting, MPO, um, when you come to the lab. So I hold no medications. Unless I want to do acetylcholine, then I will ask them to hold calcium channel blockers uh, 48 hours before. Um, another important technical aspect that, and a question that I always ask is, um, is catheter hygiene um, uh, important in CMD cases? It's probably one of the most important steps. First, before we want to do any physiology, um, once you get the um, wire and the proximal portion of, of the radio-opaque portion of, of, of pressure wire X outside the guide, and preferably in the aorta, um, you need to make sure you have no contrast in the guide. Contrast in the guide will blunt the systolic peak of the aortic pressure waveform. Before you advance the wire, or while you're prepping the wire to be introduced to the body, that would be a good um, um, uh, time to inject intracoronary nitroglycerin. So, catheter hygiene, clear the contrast, wait before you equalize, and preferably nitroglycerin should be given before that step or right at that step. Once the nitroglycerin effect has gone, once the contrast um, effect has gone, it's now time to equalize. Your first injection will be the most likely injection or value that you will discard. And the reason for that is you didn't keep good hygiene before you did the injection. So what I learned from many cases we've done, um, uh, before I hit start, 
I would flush my guide again with saline, making sure that whatever blood had creeped back up to the guide from the coronary had washed out the system, and now I hit start and I do my injections. With that, I mitigated the need to discard the first reading of my transient time. Catheter hygiene is very important. No contrast should be in the system, nitro should be given, and right before you do your coronary flow resting phase um, injections, you need to make sure that the guide is now uh, neutralized in temperature. And that will allow you also to zero temperature if you see that the, on your core flow uh, monitor that the temperature is now, um, um, there's an outline in the temperature, it's more than um, five degrees, then you need to equalize temperature at that moment and start your injections. Which vessel you will do this microvascular dysfunction? What do you want me to wire? Um, I'll tell you what we prefer in the CAT-CMD algorithm. CAT-CMD algorithm recommends that you do this measurements in the left anterior descending artery, the LAD. And the reason for that, we pick that artery because it's the sole supplier of the LV muscle mass. It's the, the vessel that supplies most of the LV, um, of the left ventricular mass, that is. Um, for that reason, we use the LAD. And we also know if you have microvascular dysfunction, it's going to be a systemic problem. So if you find it in the LAD, that will be used as a surrogate for the CERC and RCA, and it's a systemic global issue with the myocardial um, perfusion and resistance in the capillaries. When do I leave the LAD and go somewhere else? You've seen it when you are in your journey in the, in the cath lab with, with, in your accounts. You know exactly that certain LADs are very tortuous as they get to the distal portion. And as our recommendation, the location of the wire is very important, and we need the wire to be at the distal two-third um, of the vessel, or at least six centimeters away from the guide. So that's the position. Now, if anatomically the LED is very tortuous and it's tapering down, you don't want to put a wire down a tortuous vessel because you'll create what's known as a cordian effect or pseudostenosis by resulting from the wire straightening the artery, which will alter your RFR, because now you have a gradient epicardially, it will alter your FFR, and most certainly it will alter your CFR because now you have epicardial stenosis that you created by straightening the vessel. So that is an indication to skip the LAD and go to something more straight. Another scenario where I use um, um, leave the LAD and go somewhere else, if I'm looking at a, at a case with um, Minoca, if I have a patient coming in with uh, myocardial infarction uh, and STEMI, elevated biomarkers, and I have EKG changes indicating that it could be the RCA, the inferior, like inferior wall changes or posterior wall changes, for that procedure, I want to go and I see no obstructions, I will do my um, um, microvascular assessment on the, what I believe was the culprit vessel based on EKG, echocardiography, uh, cardiac MRI, something that, that told me that the inferior wall is hypokinetic, it's not functioning well, then why would I do, it's a local problem. I'm not looking at microvascular as a global issue, I'm looking at a local problem, then I pick the, the artery that supplies that territory and then do my measurements. So that's another indication for when not to use the LAD. If anatomical LAD is not favorable, skip it. Last thing you want to do is you recommend wiring a vessel and you dissect it, and now you create a problem. And second is, if I'm looking at a local problem um, based on non-invasive testing prior to the cath lab, then I will use that vessel that supplies that uh, territory or zip code of the myocardium.